Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain an action, adventure, and drama film called The Man in the Iron Mask. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the 17th century, Paris is in chaos as riots against the king continue to emerge. As a consequence, rioters are bound to prison to suffer a slow death because of hunger. Among the prisoners is a mysterious inmate, his name is unknown, so he comes by the alias The Man in the Iron Mask. As the chaos continues, the captain of the musketeers, D'Artagnan, patrols the streets of the town, but the angry citizens throw rocks at him because he still serves the king. He used to be one of the four musketeers, but the group has separated ways. Porthos has become a womanizing drunkard, while Aramis has become a priest. The two of them live together despite their very opposite lifestyles. Porthos disturbs Aramis in prayer, resulting in an argument, just as D'Artagnan enters the room. Both of them are delighted to see him, but he informs his two former colleagues that he comes in the name of the king, who wishes to summon Porthos and Aramis immediately. The fourth musketeer, Athos, peacefully lives with his only son, Raoul, who also aspires to be a musketeer. He entrusts his wife's ring for Raoul to propose with it to his love interest. France is under the reign of King Louis XIV, a militaristic leader who enjoys grandeurs. While going about his day of preparing a battle plan for war, one of his chief advisors, Pierre, informs him that riots are happening in the city. Pierre adds that the people are starving and that they could distribute the food reserved for the army as a solution. At that moment, Aramis responds to the king's call and arrives at the palace. King Louis welcomes him and informs the former musketeer that he wants him to find out who the secret leader of the Jesuits is, someone who is a threat to the people's loyalty to the crown. King Louis adds that when Aramis finds out the leader's identity, he must kill him in the name of God and France. Hesitantly, Aramis accepts the mission, knowing that he might end up in an unfortunate situation if he refuses. The king shifts his attention to Pierre's concerns about the people rioting for food. As a solution, he orders Pierre to send them rotten food. At the palace festival, Raoul is joined by Christine Belfort, the woman he intends to marry. The king gets a glimpse of the couple from the palace window and asks for the woman's name. Christine's beauty captivates the king, and just as Raoul is about to propose, they are interrupted by a game hosted by the king. A piglet is brought for the guests to catch, where the winner's prize is a piece of jewelry. Everyone participates in the game, but Christine fails to join as she is trapped in the nearby garden because of the fountains. The one behind the fountains being set off is King Louis, who sees the game as a perfect opportunity to talk to the beautiful lady. Christine looks around the palace, searching for another exit when King Louis sneaks from behind and opens a conversation. From a distance, D'Artagnan is secretly listening to their conversation. King Louis confesses his interest in Christine, but she lets the king know that she loves Raoul and is faithfully committed to him, but the king pays no attention to what she says and proceeds to kiss her. However, D'Artagnan pushes the pig toward their direction to interrupt the moment. Out of nowhere, a spy runs from behind and attempts to assassinate the king, luckily, D'Artagnan is under strict supervision and manages to throw his sword, killing the spy. Raoul rescues Christine from the scene, and they flee. Queen Anne The king's mother, is a very religious woman. She visits the chapel as often as she can and says her prayers. That day, she passes by D'Artagnan's room to personally express her gratitude for saving her son's life. The conversation briefly ends after the musketeer humbly says that it is simply his job. Moments later, he is informed that Raoul has withdrawn his request to join the musketeers, which raises suspicions in D'Artagnan. He visits Athos in his home to seek answers, where they happily embrace each other after not seeing each other for a long time. While they drink wine together, Raoul enters in a melancholic mood. His father comes to ask him what is wrong, but he returns the ring and informs him that the proposal is cancelled because he is sent back to the battlefront. Athos suspects that the king has arranged the assignment of Raoul back to war so that he could have Christine all to himself. Accepting his fate, Raoul walks up to his room as Athos gets agitated about D'Artagnan remaining loyal to the greedy king. At the palace, a commotion happens as the people of Paris attack the musketeers all over the city for distributing rotten food. Some musketeers get beaten and some run back to the gates for refuge. D'Artagnan instructs them to hold fire as he makes his way outside to talk to the people. They yell at him, refusing to listen to any word he says, as they know that he is a king's officer. An apple and a tomato are thrown at him, but he successfully slices and catches it with his sword midair. This gains the people's attention and respect, making them listen to him. He assures the townsfolk that he will speak to the king himself and bring up the issue about food. The people return to town in an orderly manner, and D'Artagnan makes his way to a secret passage to inform the king that fresh food should be given to the people. On a personal note, he asks about Christine and his intentions toward her. King Louis annoyingly replies that he is still king and the one in charge despite being a young king. After the meeting, King Louis assigns a new chief advisor and orders Pierre to be killed after distributing rotten food, which was his order. He also reminds them that he gives them the authority to shoot the people who participate in riots. The day of battle begins, where Raoul fights at the front. Before advancing to the enemy's headquarters, he hands a letter to another officer and kindly asks him to take it to the royal dispatches. As he leads the ground troops, a Dutch cannon fires right at the moment, resulting in his instant death. Meanwhile, a letter is slipped on Christine's door. She opens the letter and reads that Raoul has sadly died. 
the news breaks her into tears, as well as Athos, who receives the same news. His son's death sends him into a fit of rage, making him go to the palace to confront the king. D'Artagnan sees his friend and proceeds to calm him down, but Athos fights him and the other musketeers around. To control the commotion, D'Artagnan knocks him to the ground, begging him not to act insanely after the tragedy experienced by his son. This puts a strain on their friendship, Athos walks away after calling D'Artagnan a traitor for siding with his son's killer. In the palace, King Louis invites Christine to have a romantic dinner. Despite all the grandeur, Christine's heart is filled with grief and sadness after the death of Raoul. She could not bring herself to take a single bite of her food, but the king comforts her by saying that he only desires her comfort and happiness. To seduce Christine, King Louis brings her into a room, but she hesitates to give him what he wants. Finally, the king manages to get into her mind and make her give in to his desires, that night, they share an intimate moment as she spends the night in the palace. In a secret mission assigned by the king to Aramis, he gathers his former colleagues to have a secret meeting. He explains that the Jesuits are against King Louis' wars and the starvation of the people. Additionally, he says that the king has ordered him to kill the leader of the Jesuits, but the thing is, he is the Jesuit secret leader and has a plan to depose King Louis. His three friends look at him in utter disbelief, but Athos and Porthos agree to take part in his plans. D'Artagnan, on the other hand, stands by his oath to be of service to the crown. Athos despises him for being loyal to a dishonorable king and threatens him with death should they ever meet again. Back in the palace, King Louis informs D'Artagnan that the three former musketeers are missing and asks if he thinks that his friends are a threat to the crown. Subtly defending his friends, D'Artagnan does all he can to drive the king's attention away from them, but he orders him to track them down. The dilemma of staying loyal to service or his friendship stresses D'Artagnan out, leaving him clueless on his next course of action. During a full moon, the man in the iron mask longingly looks at the sky, wondering when he can witness the great outdoors freely. In the island prison, the three former musketeers sneak in with disguises. Aramis manages to enter after pretending to be an Italian priest. He carries a corpse and a similar iron mask inside his ample cloak to replace the prisoner with. He alerts the guard that the man in the iron mask has been plague infested. This urges the guard to act quickly and burn the body before it could further infect anyone. Aramis carefully makes his way out of the prison while carrying the real man in the iron mask with him. The group safely docks their boat into shore and makes their way to a safe house in the countryside. In an attempt to reveal the man's identity, they unmask him and find out that the man behind the mask is the king's identical twin brother, Philippe. Athos assists him to a room where Philippe tells him that he used to live in a farmhouse when people took him into prison, and has been bound to an iron mask since then. Two men enter the room to clean Philippe and fix his appearance. The three of them watch him in complete disbelief and amazement when he enters the kitchen, looking like the king himself. Aramis finally reveals to him his true identity, his mother, Queen Anne, gave birth to twins and their father, King Louis XIII, made one of them disappear to avoid dynastic warfare between his sons. His father ordered Philippe's true identity hidden, only on his death day did he reveal to Queen Anne and King Louis about Philippe. As a mother, the Queen wanted to restore Philippe's birthright, but the greedy king imprisoned him to preserve his power and put him in the iron mask to conceal his identity, an act that Aramis executed. Regretful about it, Aramis asks for forgiveness and wishes to redeem himself by replacing Louis with the more benevolent Philippe. Porthos and Athos contradict his plan, saying that it is too dangerous, but Philippe fails to answer just yet. In the palace, King Louis receives the news about his brother through a letter. He orders his servants to let his mother know of the tragic fate experienced by his twin before opening a box where the iron mask lies. He is filled with horror after looking at it and imagining what it is like to live a masked life. The queen runs to the chapel to express her grief in front of the altar. For comfort, D'Artagnan approaches and offers her his embrace. It is revealed that the two used to have an affair until the musketeer has chosen to remain loyal to the crown. For the following days, the group encourages Philippe to take part in their plan, but he refuses to pretend to be anyone else. He wants to have complete freedom in his life, including choosing to be who he wants to be. Eventually, he agrees after realizing that he wants to share a common goal with the musketeers, which is to aspire to a better country to serve the people rightfully. The three tutor Philippe on courtly life, including how to combat, dress, and act like the king. His days are filled with lessons that the group patiently teaches. Meanwhile, Christine is living a majestic life after living with the king. While she gets ready for an event, her servant brings her a letter, which she finds out is from Raoul. He wrote the letter predicting his death for being sent to battle and telling Christine that he forgives her for being the king's mistress. Tearfully, she reflects on his words and suspects the king for orchestrating Raoul's death. He confronts King Louis about it that night, but he dismisses her thoughts and acts indifferent toward her feelings. Aramis leaves for the palace and seeks to talk to Queen Anne. In a confessional, he informs the queen that there is still hope for the poor Philippe. Her eyes fill with hope after hearing the words of Aramis. Days later, the palace hosts a masquerade ball, where guests are dressed in elegant attires as they dance. Aramis, Porthos, Athos, and Philippe disguise themselves as guests at the party, waiting for the perfect opportunity to plot their mission. King Louis sees a guest in an iron mask for a split second and is disturbed by the sight of it. As he continues dancing, he sees the iron mask once again, which is held by Aramis. Repeatedly, he sees the mask, which sends him to his room after not feeling well. The group uses the secret passages to get to the king's room quickly, where he lays in bed. 
He turns to see the three musketeers approaching, and he is knocked unconscious. Moments later, he gains consciousness back and sees Philippe along with the group. Their clothes are exchanged, and Porthos restrains him by tying his mouth and covering his head. Nervously, Philippe makes his way back to the party, all dressed as the king, while Athos looks at him proudly and starts to develop paternal feelings toward him. Philippe walks to the throne in the ballroom and feels powerful for the first time in his life. Suspicions grow among the people as he helps one guest up after tripping in front of him, revealing his good nature. Queen and dramatically makes her entrance to the party, and Philippe sees her for the first time. They subtly express their happiness to reunite again, and the queen's maid shares the joy of knowing that Philippe is alive. D'Artagnan realizes something is amiss, he checks the king's room and heads back to the ballroom to check on him. Out of nowhere, Christine disrupts the party by calling the king a murderer and accusing him of being responsible for Raoul's death. Instead of punishing her, he orders the guards to lay hands off her, he further asks for forgiveness and promises to make amends. The unexpected response from the king raises suspicions in D'Artagnan and orders all palace musketeers to be on full alert. He instructs Philippe to follow him to the underground dock, to which he refuses, but D'Artagnan insists, so he follows. Meanwhile, the three musketeers make their way to the port where their boat awaits. Before they could leave, palace musketeers start attacking them, but they successfully get rid of them. Their expertise in battle has not faded after all these years, but unfortunately, the gate closes before them in the boat. The musketeers led by D'Artagnan now outnumber the group, they take a moment to look at each other and reflect on their friendship. Athos holds King Louis and frees him of the sack, revealing that the king has a twin. The men decide to trade for the brothers' lives, however, Philippe is recaptured in the ensuing chaos of their escape. As the three musketeers are able to sail away, Philippe's life is in danger once again. Inside the palace, King Louis observes Philippe's appearance and tells D'Artagnan that the man standing before him is not an imposter but his twin instead. The queen enters the room and embraces Philippe, which puts King Louis in a state of jealousy. He hits Philippe, but D'Artagnan pleads with Louis to spare his twin's life and show mercy. Philippe begs to be executed rather than sent back to prison. King Louis, hardened in his anger against all three of them, orders him placed back in prison and once again in the mask. As D'Artagnan comforts the distressed Queen Anne, they hear a faint scream from her room, where they find out that Christine has sadly taken her life. The king enters the room to find her hanging from the window, where the sight of it angers him even more. Meanwhile, Philippe is escorted to his cell, and an iron mask is placed on him once again. The special key for the mask is handed over to King Louis to ensure the entrapment of his twin. Amidst the chaos encircling the whole town, the three musketeers find refuge in a room, where they find a letter from D'Artagnan instructing them about the whereabouts of Philippe. Athos, Porthos, and Aramis unearth their old musketeer uniforms, becoming the three musketeers again and, with D'Artagnan's help, break into the prison and escape with Philippe. D'Artagnan reunites with them, to make amends. Louis, however, has prepared an ambush to arrest the group that plots to put an end to his reign. Just like the old days, the four musketeers stand side by side in battle as King Louis guards charge at them. They fight skillfully and manage to protect themselves despite being outnumbered. More soldiers arrive to entrap and beat them, but they refuse to surrender. Philippe begs the four musketeers to give him up so they could spare their lives, but D'Artagnan soon reveals that Philippe and Louis are his sons. Having had an affair with Queen Anne, she bore twins, and that it was out of fatherly devotion that he served Louis, despite his evilness. All of them are astonished to hear his revelation, which gives them more determination to fight back. Preparing to accept their fate, no matter how painful it may be, they put their swords together and say the phrase all for one, and one for all. Philippe joins them, and they all stand to prepare for battle. The palace musketeers point their guns at them, as defense, covering their king. The four musketeers and Philippe make their final attack at Louis' front line, where their bravery astound the soldiers into immobility, provoking Louis to shout orders to fire. He puts his hands on one of the soldiers' weapons and fires, setting off the rest, with many of them shutting their eyes or looking away out of reluctance. The smoke clears and reveals that the five men managed to dodge all the bullets. All the musketeers express their respect to the former ones. King Louis attacks Philippe with a dagger out of anger, but D'Artagnan stands in his way and gets stabbed instead. Philippe knocks Louis to the ground and begins to strangle him, but D'Artagnan reminds Philippe that Louis is his brother and says the musketeer phrase one last time. The crying Philippe grieves his father's death, but moments later, he swaps clothes and locks Louis into the iron mask. Philippe announces Athos, Porthos, and Aramis as his royal advisors. Posing as the king, Philippe commands the guards to take Louis and imprison him forever. The musketeers show their respect and kneel before Philippe, honoring him as their true king. At daybreak, they all attend D'Artagnan's funeral to say their final goodbyes peacefully. After the funeral, Philippe kindly asks Athos to love him like his own son, and Athos accepts, kissing Philippe's hand. Then, the three musketeers walk through the long line of proud saluting musketeers, idolizing the three. After that, France is reborn after having a better king who gave his people food, prosperity, and peace. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.